and welcome to Brew at Two. Our theme today is a cup of remembrance, and so I've chosen for my brew this cup. It's a cup that reminds me of my friend Kath because she gave it to me. And it's not that I forget Kath, not like I might forget someone's phone number when they've just given it to me. It's more that she just isn't always at the forefront of my mind, and this cup makes me think of her. And so as we, re we move through the events of Holy Week, we come today to the Last Supper. Of course at the time the disciples didn't know that this would be the last time that they, Jesus would eat with them before his death. They were gathered together in the upper room to celebrate the feast of the Passover and to, to remember the, how God rescued them from Egypt, from slavery in Egypt. But we read in the Gospels that while they were eating, Jesus took bread and he took wine. He broke the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. And he took the cup of wine and said, this is my blood shed for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And of course, these are very familiar words for us from the service of Holy Communion. And so in communion, we are following Jesus' command to remember him. He has given us the symbols of bread and wine to help us remember afresh with our whole attention that he gave his life for us. And it seems that whatever Jesus said or did during his ministry, he always invited or even challenged people to respond. And so I wonder how we respond when we remember afresh that Jesus died, that we might be forgiven. The disciples in that upper room had responded when Jesus had said, follow me at the beginning of his ministry. Though even now they didn't really understand who he was and were certainly far from perfect. They squabbled about who was the greatest, who could sit by Jesus in heaven. And so, at that time, in that upper room, Jesus also showed them and us an example to remember of the attitudes we have. And we can, we can read about it in John chapter 13, which I'll read some verses for you. The evening meal was being served. And Jesus got up from the table, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? he asked them. You call me teacher and Lord. And rightly so, for that is what I am. And now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set an example for you that you should do as I have done. And so Jesus says, I died for you. Follow my examples in your attitude and your living. Serve others, think of others before yourself. But remember too that he says it's an each other thing, serve each other. And sometimes we need to remember that we don't have to be the first and so keen to do and serve. Sometimes we have to be willing to be served. In Mark chapter 10, we read, The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And we might not be able to share bread and wine together this Easter, but we can still choose to remember. Our thoughts today around the cup of remembrance are wonderfully summed up in the Graham Kendrick song, The Servant King. And so to finish our reflection today, I encourage you to click on the link above and listen. Let the words sink in. How is God inviting you to respond today?
Maybe you're realizing for the first time that Jesus died for you and he's saying, follow me. Maybe Jesus has been on the back burner in your life and he's asking you to remember him and put him first. Or maybe he's saying, follow me to somewhere new, perhaps somewhere out of your comfort zone. This is our God, a servant king, and he calls us now to follow him.